Next up in our MySQL series are triggers. So what is a trigger? How do we use it? How do we create them? Well, a trigger is quite simply something that gets triggered when something else happens. Think of them like JavaScript events. If you've worked with JavaScript before, something happens to the data. And if it's happening to a table where you've defined a trigger, then the trigger is going to run. There's some SQL code that will run when something gets done to the data. There's an insert, there's an update, there's a delete. When one of those things happens, that's when the trigger can fire. So um, I'm going to leave a link to the trigger documentation in the notes down below. I'll also leave a link to the SQL file. So if this is the first video that you've been uh, watching in the series, you can just follow the link, get the SQL content to create all the tables and so on that we've been using. Uh, if you've been following along, you've already got everything that you need. So I'm in my movies database. I'm in the characters table. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple triggers. I'm going to create one trigger that happens when somebody's inserting a new record and another trigger that happens when somebody updates something in the table. So we'll jump over to our SQL tab, clear this out. And quite simply, the syntax is create trigger. And this is going to be saved. Once we run this, it'll be saved and then it can be used over and over again without us having to do anything other than the normal insert or update or delete that we would normally carry out. So I'm going to create a trigger. I need to give it a name so that later on, if I want to get rid of it, I can. Um, so let's call our trigger tr ins and char. So it's a trigger I'm inserting to the characters table. That's why I called it that. Just something that's short, but I can still recognize what I'm talking about by the abbreviations. So I'm going to create a trigger called that. And when do I want it to run? Well, before insert. And on which table? It's the characters table. Okay, that's the basic setup. We're going to do one for insert. We're going to do another one. Trigger on update. So I'm going to do both of these at the same time so you can see them. So before update on characters. Okay. Now, after this point, we're going to write the code that we want to run. But there's one more thing that we should add in here, and that is for each row. We'll put that on both of these. Now, what that means is when somebody does an insert, when somebody does an update, if they're inserting multiple rows or they're updating multiple rows or they're deleting multiple rows, what do we want to do to the data that's being put inside there or the data that's inside the row that is being changed? Well, I'm going to, for the first one, when somebody inserts something into our character table, I'm going to take the character name that they're providing for me and I'm going to convert it to uppercase. Simple enough. So I'll say new dot character name. Oh, sorry, set new dot character name equals, and I'm going to call the upper string function and inside there put the same thing. Just like that. That's the end of our trigger. New and old. These are keywords. You can say new dot and then a column name. This will refer to the new data that's going to be inside of that row. Old dot and the column name refers to what was in there before this whole thing started, before the person tried to do an insert or an update or delete. So great, I can do that. Um, so I'm going to take Whatever the new value is of the character name, it's an insert, so they're giving me a new character name. I'm going to convert it to uppercase, and then I'm going to set. I'm updating, basically, the value of that column with the uppercase version of it. So any name that you give me, I'm going to change it to uppercase before it actually goes into the row. And then for the update, I'll do the reverse. For each row, I'm going to set name equal to lower new dot character name. Okay, there's my two triggers. I'm going to create the two of those. 
go. Oh, yes, sorry. I ran this just before the video. These are the two triggers that I just previously created. If you want to get rid of them, this gives me an opportunity to do this. So you can drop trigger if exists and then provide the name. Drop trigger if exists tr update characters. Okay, so I'm going to drop the two of them if they exist and then I'm going to create them again. And I can run this code again and again and again. So I deleted them and then I recreated them with the exact same code inside of there. All right, so now we have our triggers. We have some triggers that are attached to this table characters and every time you make a change with an insert or an update it should run this code so we'll go to the sql tab and i'm going to do an insert so i'll insert into characters and the column names i'm going to be providing character id is a auto increment there we are and I'm going to insert into their values, let's say Elrond. He was an elf. So the rest of these are Lord of the Rings characters and Hobbit characters. So we'll do that. I'll do this insert. You'll notice that I am capital E, but the rest of it is, is lowercase. I will run this. Okay. It did my insert. Great. Now I'll browse Elrond. There it is, all in capitals. So I have done an insert, and that triggered my insert trigger to run. Converted this to uppercase. All right, we'll try it again with the update. So we'll do an update characters set, let's say, race ID equal to four, where character ID equals 10. That was the Elrond that we just created. He was number 10. So I'm going to update him. I haven't done anything at all with character name inside this update. And race ID, I, I'm not changing it. I'm just doing an update on that value. So we run it. Great. Browse. And there it is. Elrond has now been converted to lowercase. And these will be triggered uh, whether we're running the query directly with an insert, update, delete, or if you're doing a store procedure. Like we do have a store procedure created in a previous video, which was char race. I provided with this one, I'm doing an insert here, character name and race, by sending it to the store procedure. So this will also trigger it. Okay, so let's call. Our race, and then we provide a name and a race. I'm going to do Feely, and Dwarves is one. So I'm running the store procedure, which will do the insert, and this should now show up in my table as, there we go, Feely, with all caps, with the correct race. Okay, so that works. So that's store. That's um, triggers, which can be run through store procedures or insert, update, delete. Uh, they do not run if you've got some sort of foreign key restriction. If you've put a constraint on the table, that will not trigger the trigger to run. Uh, it's only if you directly do a store procedure, which is calling insert, update, delete, or you do the insert, update, delete on your own. Okay. That's triggers. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a link to the whole um, MySQL playlist as well as a link to that SQL file if you need to recreate your database. I will also leave a link to the trigger documentation for you. And as always, thanks for watching.